this election has changed significantly the norms that we apply to presidential candidates. There are things that Donald Trump does on a daily basis that would be disqualifying for almost every other candidate in modern American presidential history. It's correct that there are checks and balances in the American system that could stop any president from doing some things. So, for example, if you wanted to change domestic laws on taxes, that has to go through Congress, right? But for things like foreign policy and executive orders, uh, I find it very worrying, the prospect of a Trump presidency, because there's sort of two things here. One is in terms of foreign policy, it used to be that Congress had to issue a declaration of war for military force to be used. That's no longer the case. Um, so airstrikes, et cetera, are not subject to congressional oversight. There's no checks and balances there. The other thing is if there's any sort of foreign policy behavior like torture, for example, that is used, the only sort of check on that is a Supreme Court ruling that says the executive has overreached in a certain way. And the problem is it's very slow, right? The, the, these things take time. It was years that the, the George W. Bush administration employed what they called enhanced interrogation before there was any sort of real oversight from the judiciary. Well, in, we, we don't know because they haven't done it since uh, Truman did, but in, in practical terms, uh, it's supposed to be the prerogative of the president. That's why there's a thing called the nuclear football, that, which is a briefcase with the nuclear launch codes, that has to, by law, be with the president at all times. Um, in practice, whether somebody would be able to talk um, a president down from it, we don't know, but the, the really big point here is that these decisions are made on split-second basis, and this is something where the idea was very, very quick response if you see that nuclear weapons are launched at the United States. Um, now, I mean, I think this is something where maybe it's overblown with Trump. I mean, I, I hope that uh, it's overblown with Trump. But I think that the idea that there will not be uh, aggressive military action might be, that, that might be real, right? That there's, there, the airstrike's ability and capabilities lie with the president. They get to decide when fighter planes go in and bomb cities, etc. And that is something that there is basically no oversight for. I think that there is a fundamental shift because of Trump. So I think that the attitude, the idea that elections were rigged in America did not have mainstream currency until Donald Trump started to say that. And I think that's one of the things that's most damaging about his candidacy. I mean, I'm still hopeful that he'll be defeated in November, not because I'm a Democrat, which I am, but because I think that he is, he's violating the basic norms of pluralism and democracy that America stands for. So this is the type of rhetoric you, have, you see mostly in developing countries that have problems with democracy, and I, I call them counterfeit democracies in my work, and the United States is not one of those. We have a flawed presidential election system in some ways in the sense that A, there's gerrymandering in terms of how districts are drawn for the congressional races, and B, in terms of money and politics. These are serious problems that American democracy has to grapple with. Well, anytime the most powerful country in the world has somebody like Donald Trump uh, about to run it, potentially, uh, I think everyone should be worried. I mean, you look at the global financial crisis, right, which, which emanated in Wall Street with financial foreclosures of real estate in places like Florida. I mean, that, that destroyed economies around the globe. The United States is the most consequential country on the planet, and what it does affects the livelihoods of everyone around the globe. So I think that people should pay attention. Obviously, there's not that much they can do, but if you have American friends, I would urge them to vote one way or the other, because one of the things that's striking about American politics is that even in elections that have you know, endless news cycles, 18 months of campaigning, still we're probably going to see six, at most seven out of 10 people voting, and that would be truly historic levels. So. Um, a lot of people are going to stay home, and a lot of those people might have views uh, more in tune with the British public than, than you'd think. <laughs>